is a wonderful Tuesday and thank you so much for making Morning Rush a part of your morning routine as you get ready to leave the house. Now, I did forget to ask the, uh, the other people that I sit with what they choose today because you know Tuesdays we like to choose. Now, my guest today is someone who chooses words. They choose to paint pictures. <sighs> Such a beautiful story to tell. <laughs> now, he is a spoken word artist, a performing artist, and he has decided that he's going to be different from everybody else, and he's going to start giving us all these little teasers of beautiful things and love. And, 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 and. Hey, Kuda, how are you doing? Hi, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm feeling nice. I'm feeling nice. For someone who uses a lot of beautiful words, nice is the best word you could pick right now. <laughs> That's the best word nice. I've ever come up with. Apart from the poetry, I'm just, <laughs> I'm bad with words, actually. What? Yeah. How? I don't know. It just happens. How does that... <laughs> mm, Tell me something. Um, let me take you to high school. Where were you? So I went to Churchill. You went to Churchill? Yeah, I was a, I was a Churchill from Form 1 to Form 4. Mm. And then after that, I left and then went to a private college after that. So were you one of those Ainyuravas Kanama poems? <laughs> Actually, I wasn't into poetry when I was by Churchill. I was still a dancer. And then, so I used to just do dance and theatre and drama. The shock and terror on my <laughs> face. <laughs> Wait, so. At what point did you pick up this love for words? So it was towards the end of my Form 4, all levels. Yeah. I met a girl. <laughs> I met a girl. Yes. <laughs> you met a girl. And she introduced me to poetry. She loved poetry. And mm. then she asked me to write stuff for her. So then I just started writing poems for her in Pressure. the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and I would just write um, love poems for her. And then she loved them so much that I convinced did she, myself. Did she really or was she polite? You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but according to what she said, she loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to explore other topics that I could write about and then just write about different things. And from then on, yeah, it's been beautiful. <laughs> so 2017 sees you take this on a bit more, you know, on a serious note and yeah. actually say, look, this is, this is something I enjoy doing, something that I feel like I'm good at. Uh, what was your first poem 2017? First poem in 2017? Mm. Sheesh, I don't remember it. But I remember the experience of it. I actually Tons. wasn't planning to perform that day. Mm -hmm. um, for a long time, I was just like a bedroom poet where you would just write your stuff and just keep it to yourself. All right. So right. in 2017, there's a guy by the name of Hey, a Preacher. Mm -hmm. He opened up an open mic and he just invited us to just, just come through and just listen to poetry. And then he picked people randomly from the crowd you know, to just come up front and then just say something. <laughs> and I had those poems that I'd been writing, you know, and not, you know, performing and just keeping to myself. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just perform. Right. And from then on, I saw the response that people had mm -hmm. and how they enjoyed what I was speaking about. You know, it was something that they related with. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a beautiful thing. So I really want to start doing this more often. Hmm. Yeah. Now, so... Um, just listening to a bit of your work, of course, you do have the, the common themes, your your love, um, but you also have the elements of trust issues. Like people have really tr deep trust issues trust and issues. fear of betrayal <laughs> and really? a lot of fear in there as well. Yeah. Um, are, are that these your experiences, Kura? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I try the best I can to be authentic with my work, mm -hmm. to be truthful as well. So whatever I write about, whatever I speak about is a representation of self. So this is a represent, representation of self within mm. the different spheres of life, um, be it love, um, be it the struggles of day-to-day -day life. Mm. So yeah, trust issues <laughs> are there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How difficult do you find it to... Um, okay, so there, 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 there's certain poets who write on extremes. Um, right. You're either very happy or you're very low. Yeah. Um, and then they struggle when they're, when they're in a good space and they're just generally okay, they will then struggle. What, what polar are you? So I found myself to be on the side where I'm mostly right about struggle. Mm. And I think it's a thing that poets always go through. Mm. It's easy for you to write about things that are going bad. And then once you go in that space where you're happy and everything is fine, it's difficult to channel emotions from there and mm. to channel your creative um, work from there. So how do you balance that out? Because the, the work still needs to, to come. Yeah, well, you know, still And it's still part of who you are and your reality, considering that you want to be authentic. So how do you then tap into that other polar when you now are not in the space that flows naturally? <laughs> so firstly, I feel like it's um, mainly because of where my creative inspiration comes from. Mm. So my creativity is divinely inspired, right? So I get my creativity from God. Mm. And I always believe that I'm a vessel that is delivering a message that is placing on me. Mm -hmm. So be it a good message or a message that sounds rough, a message that sounds sweet, that mm. sounds smooth. Um, I always try the best I can to be a vessel and deliver it. 
So I don't really find that struggle of, okay, I can only write about the bad side of mm. things. I can only write about the good side of things. You find things the then just naturally just happen. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like the sound of that. Now, very quickly and very briefly, because we do want to just get that teaser that you... First of all, can you... Don't tease us. Can we just have the videos already? Um, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> before we lose people, um, I'm talking about the Beneath the Veil project. Um, yeah. Tell us just very briefly about that project and why you also decided to now just b g add the visual aspect to it as well so firstly I love to um, put my work into different other art forms mm. and just fuse my creative work with other different art forms that being you know visuals that being um, photography mm. and this time I decided to fuse my poetry with music and I came up with a EP called beneath the veil mm. so it is a combination of music and poetry just to aid storytelling and it's the main focus point is how I believe that there's so many truths that exist within different aspects of life and many of those truths are hidden beneath what I call veils. Mm. You know, as a person, there's a certain truthfulness that you hide, right? There's a certain mask that you disguise yourself behind and you have that veil and also people are not really honest, you know, mm. when they interact with you. So people have that veil as well. So yeah, I decided to put together my first ever body of work, which is that um, spoken word EP. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It was a very interesting journey as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, now, of course, um, it is it is a beautiful piece of work. Yeah. But when are you giving us the full video? <laughs> <laughs> they will be coming very soon uh, in ah, October. Very, uh, October. Okay. October, I promise. October, Between you and me, October. Mm. The actual day, mm. I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> okay.